got a call from Cartulo this morning. Imagine my surprise when they informed me that you wouldn't be presenting at the awards ceremony tonight. And here you are, looking like you just stumbled out of bed. Are you ill? I know. I, Murphy and I had an argument last night. It was awful. I see. So this mood you're in wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that you were almost kidnapped last night? Well, that's quite a theory. It's not a theory. It's what happened. The big mystery around Johnny's shooting has always been, where's his gun? There's your answer right there. Ronnie Domestico, first cop on the scene, ditched the gun before he called in the crime. I, I get that you're convinced, but I think I need a little more proof. Well, then find it. I got your message. What's the emergency? Oh, well, here he is now. You've all been wondering about his whereabouts. Sonny Corinthos is right here. Let me be perfectly clear. My client admits nothing by making this voluntary appearance. He did not violate the terms of his bail. Mr. Corinthos merely took some time off to clear his head. Nice try, Counselor, but the fact is your client jumped bail, confirming that he's a flight risk. He will be taken into custody. Not without a fight. Officer, escort Mr. Corinthos into interrogation one. Claire, I think I know how to get there. Can Jason come with me? Because I need to talk to him. Sure. Okay, cards on the table. We both know that Sonny just made a huge concession by coming back. Because if he hadn't, you'd be standing here with yet another helping of egg all over your face. So how about a little good faith here, huh? So when did you decide to go for broken outright frame, Sonny? I was new to Mexico and was a dirty cop. He just proved it. You working with Don Tamers? I think so, but it's hard to tell. Okay, you need to use them because I need all the help I can. Okay, I'm not sure Dante's help is anything that we can use. You were free and clear. Why'd you come back? You know the answer. Kids, I can't go to prison. So I'm counting on you and Dante to make sure that doesn't happen. I don't know why you're saying kidnapped. Whoever told you that is overreacting. Okay, what's your version? Uh, well, a couple fans got crazy and... That's it. That's not the way Murphy tells it. What do you mean, Murphy? After he left here last night, two men grabbed him. What? Is he okay? He's fine. Well, what happened? Well, these goons dragged him to a van, tried to force him to get in. He, he fought back. There was a gunshot, and he was able to get away just in time to see you and some strange man facing off against your own set of thugs. Thugs, not fans. Murphy watched you run off with this strange guy who also happened to be armed. So can we just stop tap dancing around? Tell me what happened. You're not answering. You're sure he's okay? I wouldn't lie about that. So why isn't he answering? And why didn't you tell me about this sooner? Well, why? I could ask you the same thing. Well, I asked you first. Murphy was frantic when he saw you running off with this mysterious gun-toting stranger. He wanted to call Interpol. I talked him out of it. I appreciate that. I had misgivings, believe me. But it sounded like you'd gone off with this guy voluntarily, and I didn't think we should sound an alarm that we couldn't shut off. Anyway, we were in the lobby discussing all of this when we saw you come in, soaking wet, and go up to your suite. Murphy wanted to run after you on the spot, and I convinced him, since I knew you were in the middle of an argument, that uh, oh I should be the one to ask you some questions. Murphy's in London, waiting to hear from you. Okay, it's your turn. Who was this stranger who rescued you last night? Bernie gave me my message. You wanted me to protect your kids, including Dante. 
I'm sure you hated the last part, but you'd have done it. Yeah, I would have. I didn't want to run. But I thought my kids would be safer, better off without me. And then Michael shows up here before the bail hearing. He shouldn't even been there. Yeah. He insisted that uh, that I run because they would kill me in prison. My my kids need to know that you know I'm a better man than they know me to be. And that better part of me got lost somewhere along the line. I need to put it back. Christina needs to stop believing that I'm an angry monster. Dante needs to think better of me. And Michael and Morgan, they need to be proud of their dad. So I got to do everything to make that right. And I can't do that from Pentonville. You know that. So whatever you, if there's anything you can find to exonerate me from this attempted murder charge, I don't even care if we, if we have to join forces. I'm on it. Yeah. I wonder why Sonny would really come back. Look, this is by no means an admission that my client actually went anywhere, but if, hy hypothetically speaking, he had, I'm sure he came back because he realized that what he would gain wasn't worth what he'd lose by staying away. You know, I am not going to be offended because I know you have zero objectivity where Sonny's concerned. But for what it's worth, I didn't frame Sonny for shooting Johnny. Okay, I didn't have to. Sonny did it all on his own. You know, I'm thinking your version isn't how it went down. Here's my scenario, okay? You were the first cop on the scene. I think you saw a golden opportunity and you took it. Dispose of Johnny's gun somewhere. And now you're just going to sit back and enjoy watching Sonny go down for attempted murder. Come on. Look, Sonny's messing with your head. And once again, you're letting it happen. Okay? You need to take a really serious step back, reevaluate your life and your priorities, okay? Because otherwise, everybody around here, they're just going to be saying, I knew him when. Gotta prove it. He doesn't deserve the way I went off on him. Actually, he was just trying to be protective, and I turned it into this whole thing about him calling me a princess, which he didn't even do. And it, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with him. He ran out. I ran after him. I was actually going to say I'm sorry, and then he was gone, and I was out in front of the hotel. There was these two guys pretending to be fans. Uh... And they grabbed you? Yes. Yeah, they grabbed me. And then there was this guy. It was a guy. A stranger? Uh, st well, he wasn't a stranger. He was... <clears throat> you know You know that? the guy in the next piazza? He has that bodyguard. He has a few bodyguards, and I guess he heard me scream, so he came and helped me. And uh, so I ran off with him. Doesn't sound like you, Brenda. I mean, maybe you know this man well enough to speak to, but to go off with him? Well, without question? What are you talking about? He saved me, so of course I, I, I ran off with him. Where did he take you? He took me to Trevi Fountain and we hid, and, you know, he brought me back here safe and sound. End of story. Well, does this guy have a name? Uh, maybe we should be sending him a thank you gift. No, he's, he's a bodyguard. He was just happy to help. Look, are you all right? Uh, uh I'm, I'm a little shaken up, I guess. Yeah, well, I wish you were a lot shaken up, because you should be. You've got a choice to make, Brenda. You can either stay here and get yourself killed, or you can get on a plane and go back to the States as fast as you can book a flight. <laughs>